3D printing, I hear you say. <clears throat> really? Seriously? What's all this about? Can we actually do something? Can it look reasonable? Is it just going to look cheap? Is it going to resonate like crazy? Well, let me try to walk you through a little bit of that and then also show you a little bit through the design and how we try to deal with this. So the design right now, it's up on Maker World. Um, you can uh, search under Meccano 23CS and you should be able to come up with it here. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. And so here is the uh, first round of uh, the, the finished product here. And this was the one of really a learning curve for me on my Bamboo A1, trying to get it to print out without any uh, without any distortions. And this is the one that uh, the pair that my son now has. And I think it's turned out pretty darn well. So I have a number of bits here in terms of the actual printing instructions and everything for you. Uh, a little bit of a thread also on the 3D printed uh, speakers um, uh, thread there on uh, on ASR. But let's take a look at actually what what you're going to be seeing here. So before I went and actually printed this, I actually printed out a test box. And in the test box, I went through and tried to say, all right, what if I look at a whole bunch of different materials? What if I look at uh, different thicknesses of materials? And this was using a contact microphone. Um, I got an idea for, uh, for this from another, from a YouTuber uh, who's actually, it's, it's web, um, his channel is called like, you know, uh, 3D Printer Speakers or something like this. I'll try to remember to leave a link to his, his video and everything down below as well. He's done some absolutely excellent work in this. And so this one here, there are a lot of things that were in it. It was multiple five samples or whatever per average together, looking at whether it's PETG or PLA or TPU. And here what I have, uh, honestly ignore anything below 700 and 800 hertz or so here. It's a small box. That's not where the resonances are. These are the resonance peaks based on the size of the box. It's a 120 millimeter uh, uh, square. These are the resonance peaks that we're actually going to be getting on here. And so one of the things that you can see on this is that uh, the PETG has decidedly less in the way of resonance than the PLA material here. I had also done things in TPU, which in this zone, again, ignore anything over here. This is going to be garbage. Um, TPU did even better, but TPU printed out like this. It was an 18 millimeter slab uh, with 15 or 20 percent or so worth of infill. It's completely flexible. It's really kind of fun and all that. It doesn't resonate, but it's also at that point going to start really leading to the Q value of your box not being what, what we really want it to be. Um, you're going to have losses due to this guy actually physically squishing. So we don't want this. The PETG is still nice and uh, nice and firm and, and that kind of thing here. So let's go instead now and start taking a look at the uh, at the actual design. So another thing that I do for you here is um, I give you the uh, 3D CAD, um, the free CAD files for each of the components here. So a nice thing is you don't need to go and buy some port and cut it to length or something like this. You can just 3D print your port. And inside of here, there are some simple dimensions that you can just go and change and it'll automatically rescale this if you actually want to have a different size port and tune it to a little bit, uh, a little bit different values there. Uh, main thing here is then the box itself. And so we can see here that the box is set up. Uh, it's got, of course, recesses for your actual drivers. It's got holes in here. The holes then actually stop before the uh, uh, 18 millimeter slab of plastic there stops. And these are sized for, I believe they're sized for number seven or so sheet metal screws. Um, eights do work. You, you may want to drill it out a little bit to keep from cracking there. So, but we also then have a, uh, a setup here where we have a nice recessed hole for your for your port. I did not want to print the port in this directly uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is I wanted to have the latitude of being able to actually change the port. So you can do that here. We have holes then for binding posts to be able to mount. Uh, these are the Dayton Audio ones. But then also another thing that you can see inside of here is that there are a number of supports. So we have this support running across the whole way here. And we also have these triangular supports that are inside of the box itself. They are triangular by design here to help out actually in the 3D printing so that you don't actually need supports. 
In addition, there's a very, very simple uh, perf board here to be able to mount the components on. Uh, the holes in this match up with the holes in the bottom actually of the box that gets printed. And you heard me call it a perf board, like a perforated board. And you may be looking at that and saying, wow, there are no perforations. Ah, but there are. So let's go take a look actually in uh, Bamboo Studio at this to try to then see what we're actually uh, what we're actually going to be printing here. So in Bamboo Studio, this is set up now as uh, um, four different plates. What I did is I brought the STL file in from FreeCAD. It comes in. It's too large for my printer. My A1 is 256 cubed, and the height dimension on this doesn't fit. It's 290. You could work to try to actually, well, well you're not going to be able to actually, sorry, you're not going to be able to fit you know, um, the drivers in there and something like that. If you got a bigger printer, feel free to not actually go and, and slice them here. But in any case, we've got, uh, um, uh, I went in and I cut it at the exact sort of intersection spot uh, that you can see here where we get a little bit of a lip there on the woofer and we get just a little bit of a lip there on the tweeter. And uh, that then gets it so that we actually can um, have these as a very nice clean thing. You'll also see that these supports, that horizontal support, actually is then broken up between these two. So each one gets to have its structural rigidity. I will tell you right now, print them in this orientation. Do not actually go and print them. I The first round I printed them rotated 90 degrees. Let me get this slicing all going here. I printed them 90 degrees and I had all sorts of warpage issues. I'm printing these, as I said, out of Petchy. Um, you can see that this takes a long time and this is actually just going to print, you know, the accessories for both boxes across all four plates, but only one of the speakers. So, you know, this one here takes about two days to print. This one here takes a little over a day and a half to print. But if we take a look then at these and at the print, let me get this out of the way for us. What you can see is that there are supports, I'm using tree supports, and the tree supports are just going to be able to support that upper edge, uh, the, really the front of the section here where the driver hole is. That's where they're going. So these supports here for rigidity, to actually you know get it so that the um, cabinet isn't resonating, the reason why they're triangular is so that we don't actually need to go and support these with extra supports. I realize I'm saying support a whole bunch here, uh, but in any case, that's the idea. So that the trees can only actually have to deal with up here because the angle that those uh, uh, those braces form, you don't actually have to have that. And you can see that on this one here as well, we get the same kind of thing that you only need to then go and have them go up there. That saves a lot of material. It saves a lot of print time. It's all in all a very, very good thing. Here, you can decide if you want to have these on there. A uh, little bit of a pain to clean off with a, an X-Acto knife or something like that. You can take them off there if you want. I've printed them uh, both with and without. These right now I did, uh, the second round I did in PETG, but um, the first one I did actually in TPU worked great, not a problem. Okay, well, let's get on to that perf board. So here's the perf board. And the perf board, remember I said, does have, oh, wait a minute, there are the perforations he was talking about. As we go and we slice through this, you can then actually see that what I'm doing is I'm using the infill to create the actual perforations that you're going to pass the leads of the components through. That's how this ends up working. It goes so much faster this way than trying to make a million little, to to little holes yourself. It goes a whole heck of a lot better. So if we take a look back, say, at uh, one of these again here, one of these ideas, let me just then go and start slicing into it, you'll see that we have infill here. The infill is actually quite light. The overall strength and rigidity of this, go back to your engineering and physics kind of thing, isn't gonna be coming inside here. That's why an I-beam is an I. It's coming from the outside. And as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of walls and everything here. So in all of this, the reason why it's nice and strong and doesn't resonate like crazy here is we've gone and we've set up, we have six top shell layers, six bottom shell layers. We only have the 15% infill. We're using that to help deal with the vibration a little bit, but so much of the strength is then coming from that. And then by having that sparse infill, 
and having it in this, of course, as you can see, it's this continuously odd varying kind of uh, position here as one panel is starting to flex where it's actually getting then the panel on the other side where it's translating that energy through to the other one is then getting spread out. We're getting it so it's not actually going to resonate very well. And then in addition, we have then all of these braces going throughout here that are not evenly spaced to again try to break up any resonance modes. So honestly, I've had these cranking and then gone and actually just felt, tried to listen. I have a contact microphone. They're doing a fantastic job. They do not have any kind of ring to them because of this. So in all of it, then you're going to end up with, well, you're going to end up with a setup here in which we've got, um, as you can see, we've got a couple different, um, you know, we've got the different components. And then we've got it so that this is, you know, a, you know, a solid kind of thing. Here. So here we've got the so, accessories. Uh, is, we've got the coming ports. Out in a couple different stages. So there are then. See a um, nice flare there. Ports. Um, we've got tune those as you want. Here boards. The printed versions of the perf board. Basically, you like using infill to go and create a, a perf board. And then we have three different stages of the. And we've also process. got. This one of the boxes that's just this come off the printer really fresh out of the and printer. that's uh, had the supports like removed, but otherwise is exactly there, how it's come on off the printer. Cleanly. Yeah, the same then style kind of thing right end, after it's gone through a round of sanding and, sanding fill in, and filling in a little bit of the uh, uh, the defects and gaps. On the material there to be and then finally over here, we've got two of the halves that have been set up and gone through full rounds of primer and filling to try to clean them up. So these are then ready to assemble. I'm gonna solder up the crossovers, stick them inside of there, and then after that, be able to go through and say, all right, let's actually now go through, solder the components together, put them in here, and then you're good to go. As I say, it took about four and a half uh, uh, kilograms to do the full pair of speakers. It is not a minor amount of filament that you need, I just picked up generic uh, uh, Sunlu PETG off of eBay. I got it for eight fifty a kilo. So yeah, I'm talking what thirty five dollars or so worth of worth of material to print it all out here. All right, that's not so bad. Anyway, stay tuned next time. We're going to start going over things like the crossover and the actual assembly, and eventually, we'll see these as a finished product.